Today I want to share a recipe that's been part of every Christmas I can remember here in the Appalachian Mountains where I live. It's a recipe, Granny's recipe, for sugar cookies. Um, as long as I can remember, those sugar cookies was part of my Christmas. I called Granny just before I started this video to ask her if she remembered where she got the recipe. She said she didn't. Uh, that it may have come off even off the back of a bag of sugar or something like that. But she's been making them. I mean, they've been part of my life that as long as I can remember every Christmas. Um, and I think they're better than other sugar cookies because of one little secret ingredient. And you may have this recipe, so you may already know what, guess what the ingredient is. But the, one of the ingredients is zest, orange zest, so the rind of an orange. I just think that gives them such a good flavor. I really love that little punch of flavor. So as I said, we've been making them as long as I can remember. Uh, and Granny would make them every year, something I really looked forward to. She would, um, you know, let me help. And she had cookie cutters. My favorites were the Christmas tree. The, she had an angel that was really pretty, but I liked the Christmas tree and the snowman and Santa Claus. And we would make them every year. We would decorate them. There's lots of ways to decorate sugar cookies. But we would just use sugar. Uh, she would let, let us mix or she would mix some food coloring in so we'd have green and red and white um, sugar, different things like that. Well, I'm five years older than Paul, so once he got to an age where he could help too, he started helping. Well, we were really, we were about like Corey and Katie when it comes to being silly, my daughters. We would get silly. And I think as we got older and as we got sillier probably, uh, Granny decided finally that that would just be our job. So then for, for quite a few years, me and Paul made them every year, and that was fun. Uh, lots of good memories of that, too. And once I was married, of course, I wanted to, to continue the tradition myself. Every year, I would once Corey and Katie were big enough, I would let them help me make sugar cookies. In the beginning, it, it started out with uh, I would be all excited, you know, it's going to be a great day of cookie making. By the end of the day, with two little ones, I would think, why did I think this was a good plan? You know, why did I think this was a good idea? I should have never done this. It's such a mess. But over the years, I realized that all the joy that came from making cookies with the girls was uh, way better. I mean, it, it outweighed the mess that I always had to clean up. And their cookie making enterprise would always d delve into silliness just like mine and uh, Paul's did. You start out really good being serious and then by the time you get into those last pieces of the dough you just get silly. You start making things like sideburn uh, cookies is what Corey and Katie would do uh, and I'm sure me and Paul had some weird cookies that we come up with too. But I'm, today I'm going to show you, share that recipe with you, though. It's just my favorite. I also like that it's a recipe that you can make the dough one day. So that's what I'm going to do today, make the dough. And then the following day, you can make the cookies. You need to let it, I think the recipe says to let it chill at least two hours in the refrigerator. So you could do it on the same day, and I've done that before. But it's kind of one of those things you can get the, if you're in the middle of your Christmas baking, you can kind of get that step out of the way. And then the next, the following day, just have the cookies to make. So I was going to read you, this is an old recipe book that Granny had where she had wrote down a lot of her handwritten things and she gifted it to me after I was married and I really love it um, because it's all in her handwriting. But so sugar cookies, it takes two thirds cup shortening, three fourth cup sugar, one half teaspoon grated orange peel, one half teaspoon vanilla, one egg, four teaspoon of milk, two cups sifted all-purpose flour, one and one-half teaspoon baking powder, and one-fourth teaspoon salt. And then you're gonna bake them once you're actually at that point at 375. So Granny goes over the instructions, which is basically like most of all the cookies probably that you've ever made, you know, thoroughly cream, shortening sugar, orange peel, and vanilla, and then you add your egg, you beat to light and fluffy, stir in the milk, and then you sift in the dry ingredient, or sift the dry ingredients, and then add them. My favorite part of these recipes like this that Granny wrote is I love when she wrote little notes to herself. So she says to go on, oh, she says chill one hour. So I was wrong about the two hours. Chill one hour or overnight, either as long as you need to, but at least one hour. And then on lightly floured surface, roll to an eighth inch thick. Now that depends on how thick you like your cookies. You may like them really thin and crunchy or thicker, so that, that part would be up to you. Um, cut in desired shapes with cutters. Bake in greased cookie sheet at 375 for about six to eight minutes. Again, your oven may be slightly different, so you may um, have to do that differently, that part. But this is um, 
I love these little notes she wrote to herself. That's my favorite part. She says, when cutting shapes, press with colored sugar and make real pretty cookies. So that was a note she had wrote to herself wherever she found the recipe. So that's my favorite thing about handwritten recipes is when people, people write themselves little notes. I try to write in mine so that Corey and Katie someday, maybe they'll notice some things like that that I wrote, advice on how to, how to do it, little advice. Uh, on the back of this, I just noticed Here's this is, she's wrote down this recipe in 1984 was for grape jelly, but the part I noticed is, I didn't know this, I guess I've just not missed, I've missed it or forgot it probably, but she had a stamp, so it said this recipe from the kitchen of Evelyn Luzine Wilson. So at one time she must have, must have had a stamp. I don't really remember that. Anyway, one of my favorite little cookbooks. And now I'm gonna show you how to put together granny sugar cookies. Okay, I've got the shortening, the sugar, and the orange peel in to cream, and I'm just going to add my vanilla, and then we're going to cream that. Okay, I'm going to scrape down the sides, and I see some orange zest right there that needs to be got in better. going to add the egg and then we're going to beat to light and fluffy. Okay, we're light and fluffy and we're going to stir in our milk. It says stir in but I'm just going to beat it in. down the sides again. Now I'm going to sip the flour. And the bacon powder and salt together. going to add the sifted ingredients to our batter that we've got in here. Our egg and sugar and shortening mixture. Scrape down the the dough comes together you're done. Now we're going to get the dough out. It's a really soft dough that's why you have to make sure that you chill it before trying to roll it out. pieces everywhere. So then you just want to divide it into in half. So ever how you want to do that, I just kind of try to make sure that it's all incorporated there. Usually make it into a little, little log kinda. Take a knife and measure two pieces. And I usually use some saran wrap to wrap it up good before putting it in the fridge. So, there's one. Okay. 
There's the other one. So now I'll put these in the refrigerator and I'm gonna leave them overnight. So tomorrow I'll show you how to do the rest of the cookies. You could leave them as Granny's recipe said, an hour. Do we not have blue? Yeah, but I thought we would just use white. You want blue? Mm -hmm. So our cookie dough has been chilling overnight actually and now we're ready to make cookies. So this is something that me and the girls do every year. So what's some of y'all's favorite memories? Can you remember doing this when you was really little? Oh, of mm -hmm. course. Yeah. Always at the cookie dough. You couldn't make me stop yeah. and I got sick every yeah. time. Yeah. I just always liked the different colors of sugar, mixing them up. I just thought it was so mm -hmm. fun. Yeah, and I remember the table. One of the, so we had a, a table before the one we have now, and then we have one even before that, and I loved that table. And I liked table. sitting at it. Yeah. And I liked sitting in the chairs, and we were like so small that we could barely, like yeah, our feet wouldn't touch the floor. Our head was right at the edge of the table. Yeah. And I love sitting at the table and, mm -hmm. and playing with the sugar and the cookies. And then it was really fun to like pat it out and, and get a shape. And we would always kind of like be like, who can get the best mm -hmm. shape and who can make the most cookies, so. And it would always start out really serious, like we're gonna make beautiful cookies, even when they were little. <laughs> and then it would uh, evolve into silliness. <laughs> Where do y'all remember the year you made sideburn cookies? Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. I do remember that. Yeah. And they were pretty good. <laughs> they looked authentic. So it would always end in silliness, but it's always fun. It's a great tradition. One, like I said, that I had with Granny and then with me and Paul. And then, of course, with my girls once I, I had them and they got big enough to help. And I would always wonder, why in the world did I think this was a good <laughs> to let them help me? Because it would end up in such a mess. When they were little, I mean, as they got older, of course, they could clean up the mess themselves. So, you mean I have to clean up my Yes, mess? you have to clean up your mess. So what we've done is the same thing that Granny would do, is that we've just took some white sugar and we've added some food color into it and turned it into some different colors. And that's what we'll like use green. for decoration. I did have a little bit of uh, raw sugar, which is just a, a much coarser sugar, so we'll use that. I said you can see the actual granules. Yeah, you can actually see that. I use that on tops of cakes and pies and stuff, but I thought... Um, that we would use it for this too. So since I guess I'm gonna let y'all, usually I let them do the cut now and I'm like the person that ferries back and forth to the stove, putting them on the uh, baking sheets. And we're just using parchment on ours. You could grease your baking sheet. I think Granny's recipe, <laughs> we've got more in the fridge. I think Granny's recipe says to, um, actually says grease cookie sheets, but um, I use parchment paper just to make it easier, but either one will work great. And then you cook them at 375. I better get my recipe out and double check that. For It'll depend on in your oven, but about six to eight minutes. When they barely get, the thing with sugar cookies like this is that they can get overdone really quickly. You think like, they're not getting done, they're not getting done, then all of a sudden they're burned. So you just gotta keep a, a check on them. But when they just barely start to brown around the edges, they're ready, ready to go. Okay, you two. I got more than you. <laughs> you probably yeah. need you some, I got some flour for you. And there's all the ornaments. Cookies. Yes, and I was right, 375. And as always, I'll put the in the description below, there'll be a link that takes you to the whole recipe so that you can see it all if you didn't um, want to take time to write it down as I went. Yeah, it is a very soft dough. So you definitely got to take some flour. But you put too much and it'll get dried yeah, out. Yeah, can't put too much or it'll get dried out. But Starting with the Christmas tree. So usually we'll do... Thank you. Sometimes you can use a spatula to get them off the board if they're too... Uh, if you get them really thin or they're too... Your dough's too soft. And usually we will put like a whole... Fill up the whole cookie sheet and then decorate. Do the hard work first and the fun part next. But there's Santa. You can Santa. certainly do it Oh my gosh, way. look. I want to show you before all the decorations get on them. Isn't he so cute? Santa. He is cute. And for, uh, hold up that cookie cutter, Katie. So ones like that that have the uh, backwards, like have the little indention, it helps if you dip those in flour. If you're having oh, a hard time about for that. them to come out. <gasps> My ginger <laughs> lost his arm. <laughs> but 
often happens to gingerbread men. They often lose Okay, well, I'm, I'm sorry. You hear me in the pan? I'm going to oh, just kind of... Uh, glue him back. I'm just going to push his arm back together. Maybe he'll stay. Well. I'm going to freehand something real quick using the sharp edge of the spatula. Okay, he's already... Her artist... Artistry. Artistic nature is coming out. Or is it going to be a sideburn? <laughs> I don't know what it'll be. I gotta decide what what it's gonna be here. Is that about right? Yeah, maybe a little thinner. I might go this way a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So the thinness or thickness of the cookie really just depends on your personal preference. I think Granny's recipe said an eighth of an inch, but whatever. You can make them thicker or thinner. Oh, look at the pretty angels. She's pretty. Gonna use the spatula or else she's gonna lose her wings. Yeah. Like my gingerbread man lost his own. Thank you. That's as hard as falling apart at the edge. Come on, don't do that. What are you trying to make? I don't know. <sighs> You'll see. Is that like a little Christmas log? Yuletide log? About to find out. Oh, he kept his arms. You can dip those in flour too to help them yeah. release. Look, it's another sideburn. <laughs> oh, you oh. lied. You were too making a sideburn. <laughs> those sideburns are hard to make. And that ain't even a good sideburn either. But that is my sideburn. Oh, that's great. Looks like an ear. Yeah, I had thought about doing an ear. Hey, did you pinch the top of my tree? Don't I you did. dare. I was tempted to rip I'll it I'll get after you if you do that. Terry, you Terry. Terry. When we were kids, is how it went. Corey tore a cookie up of mine, and I tore one of Corey's up. Yeah, that was when it was when I would begin to wonder why I thought it was a good idea to let you help me. And then it cookies. wasn't long, and the tears started, and it was yeah, a, and the fist fighting started, and the whipping started. <laughs> <laughs> the the bad, don't do that. Getting yelled at and time out and all that kind of fun stuff. Okay, Mom, I need to go back to when we were kids and you roll out my dough for me because yeah. I'm not doing a good job. Just no man, nobody's used to him. Oh, ha ha ha, I'm first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -oh, I just about ripped his head clean off. Yeah, so that's another thing. You have to learn not to rip the arms and legs off your cookies. How dare you steal my hard earned dough? <laughs> <laughs> Good what I, did say. I did see what you did. There. I want to do the story. I haven't done it yet. I love this rolling pin, and a very near and dear friend made my rolling pin. He also made something else that's on my hand. He made it for me. Yeah, I was gonna it's say, mine. you're rolling pin? Made it for me. Me, no, actually he did, but I'm using it and I'm excited to get to use it because it's really nice. And it's like, the color is so pretty. It's like perfect. So, yeah, even though I'm a jeweler and I have all this equipment and over the years as I've developed my skills and got more equipment, I still can't make this ring the way that he made it. Um, and of course now it's covered in flour and dough but this ring is made out of a quarter if you can get quarters from 1964 or before that i guess they would be 0.90 90 percent silver so that's plenty malleable enough to work with and how he did it this is what he told me so if this was the quarter and pretend the face was here and it you know the head on the quarter was facing you you would take it up on its edge like that and he used like a little anvil or a little steel mm -hmm. block of some kind and a spoon mm -hmm. and he hit that edge and, and took it around through there and every time he would spin it and hit the edge, the edge starts to get wider and fl uh, flatten out and then the insides kind of pull in, kind of follow that circular motion. So that's how he did it and at some point he um, took a knife in there and, a, and, some, and whatever other tool and scraped the remaining uh, material out and then polished it. But what he did that I don't understand how he did, and I'm yet to figure this out my, for myself because I've bought quarters and tried. He pulled, he got the date to go with it. So on the inside of the ring, if I can get a picture, I'll get a picture and you can put it in there. It's the date and it says Liberty, it says US quarter dollar. 
So he made this one for me out of a quarter from 1937 because Pap was born in 1937. And after he passed away, that was just a really nice thing um, for him to do. But it's just so uniform and perfect and the outside is like totally smooth. And he had no idea what ring size I wore and it got here and it just fit perfect and I just never took it off. And you can see a... You can't see because of the flower. There's almost, it's not a blister, but it's a permanent kind of indention in line there. Mm. So, cool. Thank so, you. Yeah, and Ed doesn't um, make them to sell, but he did do a great tutorial, and I will link to that on my blog so that you can see how he made it. So, maybe you want to make one yourself. Um, and I will also link to Katie's shop so that you can see the rings that she makes, which are not made out of a quarter. Although she does have some, you got any dime jewelry? I have a dime left. Yeah. yeah. So she's got, she's been doing some really cool things with old dimes. Uh-oh. I, I lost his head. That's okay. I'll do him again. Here. It's okay. I already just killed him. I'll do oh, it again. Oh, I thought she was going to. That's okay. He was, I cut, I accidentally cut his head off okay. by accident. I took your rolling yeah. pin, so. That's okay. Anyway, I will link to both those so that you can see yeah. how. You can uh, actually. How our friend made the awesome rings. He made all of us one. We love them. He and made me two. I've got two. And then uh, also to Katie's Stamy Creek Creations shop. I do the dimes, and you could take any of those coins if you wanted, and and t uh, take them through a rolling mill, which Did I have a rolling mill. Did you make one out of a nickel? Not a nickel. No, I tried that, but that was too hard. Oh, the metal was not right. But one. you can take the coins and flatten them out, and just use them for silver. And then make anything, but see, I don't want to do that because the coins are so cool. Why waste yeah. them by flattening them out so you can't see the face anymore? It's a tag burn. To match oh, mine. Gosh. Corey awesome. had to make a, you want to put it on yours? or this Yeah. Is, yeah. Corey had to make a sidebar. Uh, and a lot of things when you talk, talk, about, you. talk about jewelry, people will say, I mean, about coin jewelry, where that's against the law, you're not supposed to deface the... Mm -hmm. um, thing, but from what I understand, as long as you're not trying to deface it and still use it monetarily, yes, it's right. okay. And if it's out of circulation, that helps. Like some of this, the, yeah. these coins, um, if they were made in the 30s and the 40s, they're sitting in a bank somewhere, or they're sitting in somebody's pocket because yeah. they want to keep them, or, or if something you're like not that. Trying to deface it and then also use it. Right. No, I definitely but wouldn't be doing that. Anyway. That's it's, a very old method, the quarter one. It's that's a very old. Awesome. A lot of older people, you'll hear, you've, I've heard heartwarming stories about um, how they made them for their wives or husbands. I mean, you know, they made them for wedding right. rings. And then I also, I think it was Malcolm, our cousin Malcolm that lives in Thailand, um, that he made them. He said he about drove his mother crazy making them because he would make them for his girlfriends. So she just made hear him, the, the ding and ding ding ding. Go ding. out to the shed yeah. to make his ring so that she didn't have to hear the constant ding and yeah. Yeah. So it's awesome. I mean, to to use the old coins and like I said, you can you can roll them out for the silver and then just have sheet silver. But why do that when you could look at the cool? Um, another of it. one more story. And we'll quit talking about the rings, but um, is that after Ed did do the wonderful um, tutorial for me on the blind pig and the acorn one of our friends decided that they really wanted to do that with a symbolic meaning like katie said uh using the birth date of, of someone in their family so they did that and then they made one for christmas and worked on it all year and then Aww. gifted it to that person really i think nice. it was a grandma i mean they gifted it to their grandma i can't it's remember really nice. anyway or maybe to their mother and it was the mother's date i can't remember anyway yeah so a really inexpensive mm -hmm. uh present if you just you just need to know how but uh, well, I say inexpensive. If you actually go looking for a 1937 quarter, you're going to pay for it. But if you're lucky enough to find one, keep yeah, your eye and it's out. not too bad. Okay, I think Corey's finished with her. I told you I'm, beat you. I'm slow and, I, so and I'm, I'm chatty. Set yours here. That's why I'm slow. Katie is chatty. I'm just playing. It's not a race, but I did win. Well, let's push <laughs> yours back, and then we'll. Oh, we, we actually have more dough in the refrigerator that we have to do. But we'll let Corey, let's see, do it this way. Teddy is slow and methodical. Let Corey start decorating hers, and then we'll put these in the oven. It's the artist in All me. the sugar before you eat Oh, yeah? Yeah, and there'll be nothing left to decorate mine, so I'll just have to cry over my plain cookies. When Paul and I were little, uh, and probably when y'all were young too, we used to try to be really elaborate, and we would like put different colors on the Christmas trees, and um, like Corey's about to do here, I guess. <laughs> But most recent years, I just basically make them all a solid color, whatever it is. And if you're worried about your sugar falling off, it does fall off. Uh, you can put like a egg wash or a like just egg white wash over it. 
I've even heard of people, what else have I heard of them? Oh, I like um, mix water with Karo syrup or something and put it over it. So you could do that if you're worried about that. Um, but I don't, I don't really like to do that because it kind of makes the sugar cook down into the <laughs> dough instead of being on top. But, but you do it any way you want to. Of course, if you look, you can find a video, I'm sure all kinds of videos of where people use the um, like royal icing. They ice them and then put the little... Uh, I don't know what they're called. Little mm, decorative. They look decorative. like little pearls. Yeah, they look they're like edible. Pearls. Edible yeah. pearls. They're really cute. So you can do, there's yeah. the sky's the limit when it comes oh, yeah. to decorating. But we just do it the way Granny did it. You get some phyllo dough yeah. or whatever that stuff at fondue. Fondue. I, don't know, I said dough. phyllo dough. I must be hungry. Uh, fondue, you can make anything. Make little leaves, yeah, like little red berries do. for holly. Uh, and using that icing is really pretty. Uh, and they're good. I've had cookies like that. But I just like what I grew mm. up on. And this is how Granny did hers. So y'all, so they missed this part that I read. This was so sweet. I love Granny's recipes. I love all of them. But I especially love it when she writes notes to herself. So on this one, she put, When cutting shapes, press with colored sugar and make real pretty cookies. Ain't that sweet? Mm -hmm. That's so sweet. Pretty I love cookies. That. She's so sweet. Every time I go down there, she's like, and I'll be working. I'll have been working all day, and I just look terrible, and I've got soot all over my face from my torch, and I just look like crap because I just am like hard at work. And she'll be like, oh, that's what she'll do. Oh, you look so pretty. You look so nice. I just love looking at you and your sister. You're so pretty. And I'm Aww. like, I can look so much better than this, Granny. Thank yeah, you. That's so sweet. Really sweet. I know. She's so genuine. She just loves the little she things. She is. Granny is genuine. She is who she is. And she don't really care if, about what anybody else thinks about it. Even us. She'll <laughs> care about it. But she, she is her own person. Yeah. She doesn't do it in the kind of way of, I don't care. She's no, just actually she just kind of obliviously actually, that way. Right. She just, yeah, don't even enter her mind that no. somebody would think something about how she, is what a good she, word to she's, explain, Granny. Yeah, mm -hmm. oblivious. Yeah. She just is. She just is who she is. But genuine. Yeah, totally. There's not more genuine person. So, Katie, I love this. I didn't know you made this. It's a little house. Yeah, I'm making so Katie's a Katie's using house. her artistic. I was going to make a heart, but then I realized that this big old thing ain't going to cut uh, corners, and I was going to have to end up with one of them geometric hearts, and I didn't want to do that. So then I made a house. When the next cut didn't do right, I thought, oh, that'll be a house. That's really cute. So I have a great story about a house, and Corey and Katie, should I tell the story of the no. houses? <laughs> no. I promise I'll behave. I've got all I'm kinds I'm going to get of, angry. Uh, okay, I've got all kinds of stories, of course, but... I was robbed! <laughs> scared me to death. <laughs> I thought I might. So when Katie was little, she wanted to be an artist, of course. She is. She, that's what she grew up to be, is an artist. But at, at that time, she really thought she was going to be like a painter. Yeah. Drawer, whatever. Artistic, that in that way. So they, at, at their school that they attended, we had a fantastic PTO. Absolutely fantastic. Led by Jamie Keener. If you're watching Great. this, we love you. Thank <laughs> if you're you. Watching this, we love you. I think she lives in Colorado now. Yeah. I hope you're bundled up. It's probably cold. Yeah. Sorry, Katie. Anyway, so it, she decided that they'd have a school-wide art show to promote the arts. It was so. It was just fantastic, and every child got to participate in it. Well, Katie thought that, of course, she was. She just took it so serious because this is her goal in life, you know, to be an artist, and she just worked so hard on her projects. And Corey was like, yeah, who cares? You know, I'll have fun with it, but whatever. And I guess you were in like maybe second and third grade. <clears throat> so Corey painted this, um, this, these houses. They're beautiful. You would think that it come out of a, um, like an artist, like a gallery or something. It, ain't that good. it is Mama, beautiful. It used to hang in Miss Cindy's house in Black Mountain. You would have thought that she'd went to one of the little, you know, fancy artist galleries there in Black Mountain and bought it. I just loved it. Anyway, and I can't remember. Sorry, Katie, what you made. <laughs> it was that forgettable. <laughs> but anyway. Hey, listen, where I went wrong is I always tried to go <laughs> abstract. So I got them, oh my lord, remember them glitter glue things? And they ran a yeah. stick and you could put, oh yeah. Oh yeah, I do remember. We had that one framed too. It was like the, was mine, the seashore. No, uh -uh. Coconuts on the seashore was the yeah, name of your. No, I don't, I didn't oh, was do that. that. You? Was me, I didn't, I yeah, so that must be the next one you want. Anyway, for two, two years wrong in a way, two years in a row, uh, Katie worked, slaved over her projects, entered them. Kate, Corey was like, eh, nah, whatever, I'll just do this. And Corey won. Like, I was first so place, mad at her. I think. And Katie didn't even get honorable mention. But, we can laugh about it now. It's time Katie really cried about it. But, uh, 
loser. Well, I mean, it was understandable, it but it was, it was a great over. teaching lesson because life's not fair. You know, you got to realize that you just pour your heart into, you got to do it for yourself. Pour your heart into something for yourself anyway. So become a great uh, lesson over time. But then later on, I do have some of Katie's artwork when they were in high school. Um, and you remember who was teaching the class? Was it Miss Delorier? Susan Delorier. So, which is an amazing artist. I have her artwork now in my bedroom. <laughs> yeah. I do too. But, so in her class in high school, Katie did a, was it a charcoal? Is that what charcoal, you call it? Yeah. Charcoal drawing of a cabin on like a little mountain or a little hill. Uh, and it's really pretty and I have it hanging besides uh, Corey's houses <laughs> fantastic houses and that's what she titled it too i think just houses <laughs> you suck <laughs> and it won anyway good memories those were good days but that was a good life lesson okay. and that was working. beautiful too you gotta hold those up and Cover show up them. the okay this house is about to get smashed because when i get angry no, you can't. You can't get angry. Okay, we got to put these in the oven, but let's hold, hold on. up your house Katie get so the other house can see. Well, that, that first house is better. I love, I Sugar love that everywhere. House. Yeah. Sugar everywhere is what happens. Time to put them in the oven. Corey's turned out really pretty. I didn't even decorate mine. <laughs> oh, you, you got to get on the ball, girl. Yes, okay, sure. look. Here's the bed. I'm not showing you the other house because I'm about to eat it. This is my house. Cute. It turned out cute. And you gotta put some sugar on it. So we're gonna finish making the cookies, get some of them baked, and then we'll show you the finished product. Okay, our cookie making day is over for today. I'm sure there'll be other Christmas treats coming our way, but we've got our mess cleaned up. We had a good time. Had a lot of silliness <laughs> as always, but we also got a lot of good cookies to eat. Mm -hmm. So me and Katie are gonna one. try one. You're gonna go for a star. Mm -hmm. I think I'll go for a tree. So we both got us our, got us some milk in our, I love to drink out of our old snuff jars. These might have been my grandmother's, my great grandmother's. We had some of hers. Are these, is it good? Mm hmm. I like to bite all the corners off, <laughs> all the points. <laughs> mm. I'm just throw some sugar. Tastes like Christmas, but I love the. Can you taste a little bit of orange in it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love that part. Mmm. Mine's still really soft in the center. It's really good. Mm. So good. So we hope that you enjoyed hearing about one of our favorite Christmas traditions, which is making Granny sugar cookies every year. Granny made them. Me and Paul made them. Now me and Corey and Katie have made them for what? Since y'all were five, they're 20, 20 years. so at least 20 years. If you try them, we hope you'll like them as much as we do. And we hope that you'll leave a comment and share one of your favorite Christmas cookie recipes with us. And as always, we hope you'll continue to drop back by often as we celebrate Appalachia.